welcome everybody to the Georgetown Chamber of Commerce's 2021, almost said 2020, Rita, candidate forum for Georgetown ISD Board of Trustees and Georgetown City Council. Uh, you're hearing my voice online. My name is Jim Johnson. I am the president and CEO of the Georgetown Chamber of Commerce. The Chamber's mission is to facilitate economic success for our community through advocacy, education, and collaboration. Today's forum is designed to educate our members, the business community, and general citizens on candidates running for office and their positions on topics that have been selected by the Georgetown Chamber of Commerce's governmental affairs team. Today's event is a forum, not a debate, and the candidates will each answer the same questions uh, in a pre-selected order. At this point, I will introduce our moderator for this evening. Our moderator is Miss Rita Healy, General Manager with the Sheridan Austin Georgetown Hotel and Conference Center, Board Member with the Georgetown Chamber of Commerce, 2019 Board Chair, and current Committee Chair for the Chamber's Governmental Affairs Committee. Thank you, Rita, for being here, and thank you for moderating. My pleasure, Jim, and thank you for always getting it right. <laughs> it's a mouthful. Um, good evening, everyone, and good evening, gentlemen. Um, we're going to rotate the questions, so um, each of you will answer the same question, but I'll rotate who starts. And so I'll, I'll just call on each of you as we go, but um, you can kind of keep track in your own mind. And if I get mixed up and get the order wrong, somebody just raised their hand. I, I take direction pretty well. So we're going to start with Stephen. Good evening. Um, first question is, what is your vision? Oh, I'm sorry. Opening remarks. There we go. See how well I take direction? Well, let's see if the microphone works. Jim, are you pleased with that? I am, thank you. Okay. Um, we have a saying in Georgetown that uh, if you've lived here 20 years, you're old Georgetown. Well, I'm ancient Georgetown. I got here when I was six weeks old. Um, I come from a family that uh, has long been involved in the school district. My father was on the school board 55 years ago when we desegregated the schools. My wife was on the school board for 12 years between 1989 and 2001, uh, but I have never uh, given any time for public service, and I decided uh, that it was time for me to do what I was trained to do, and that is to give some of my time uh, to serve uh, for public service, and I decided to do it on the school board but what really led me to pick now um, was the fact that I tutor at uh, Pearl Elementary and I have tutored at Williams and Pearl for five years before the COVID uh, epidemic. And so I, I became very involved with the children and I became very aware uh, that there were some educational problems, but I just attributed it to the fact that um, children that have disadvantages when they come to learning are going to have problems with learning. Uh, but as the test scores were reported and the ratings were reported, I became more and more concerned. And finally, I decided that it was my time to step up and see if I could do something about it. Test, test. All right. Yeah, I'll go ahead and start over. Hello, everybody. My name is Jeff Sigismund. I grew up in Austin, Texas, went to Lubbock, Texas to attend Texas Tech University, where I graduated with an accounting degree and a minor in mathematics. I moved back to Austin and started working with a company called National Instruments as a staff accountant, spent seven years there, and now I currently work for Electronic Arts as a business planning lead. I also have never thought about running for public office. Uh, I am a, a new father to a two and a half year old daughter. And after the attack on the Capitol on January 6th, I sat there watching it, wondering what went wrong in these people's lives to bring them to this spot. And my thoughts are, 
it made me realize that I could do a lot more than I was currently doing. So I decided to put my name in the hat and try to make the effect on where I think we can make the most impact is our children. So um, have, having a daughter who will be a future GISD student, I want to make sure that GISD is, is the place to be for all students, including my daughter. So thank you for having me and I uh, look forward to talking more. Mic check. Is it good? Everybody, okay, perfect. So uh, I'm Ben Stewart. It's uh, nice to be here tonight. Thank you guys for coming out and taking their, your time this evening to listen to us. Uh, a little bit of my background. I've uh, moved to Georgetown about nine years ago. I have a wife. I've been married to her name, Sarah. We've been married for 19 years now uh, and two daughters in the district. Uh, we moved here again nine years ago and we put our oldest daughter in the district eight years ago. They started out uh, at Carver. And I've got one in Wagner Middle School now, and my youngest is still at Carver. So uh, for the last, I guess, eight years, I've been involved in the district, uh, starting out as a PTA dad, uh, worked my way up uh, into watchdogs, and then uh, ran treasury for the PTA. Uh, after that, for two years, I moved to a presidency of the PTA, and then I got involved at the district level with a citizens advisory committee. I don't know if anybody in the room right now is on that committee, but if you are, thank you for that work. It is hugely important to what we do in the district. Uh, so uh, after Citizens Advisory Committee, I was appointed to the board uh, for the unexpired term for Rona Johnson. Uh, after that, I had to run again and was uh, elected to the board uh, one more time. And now I'm running for my third term on, uh, on the board. So happy that you guys are here and really hope that you'll vote for me. But I guess uh, the, the question I get most often when we're talking to community members is why do you do this? What, what about it? What do you, why? And I had to really reflect a lot on my life. And I think looking back at my life, I came from a, a single parent home. Uh, I had lots of trouble uh, when I got into high school uh, with grades and, you know, things that you know, happen when you, in my opinion, you know, not having a dad around. It really affected me in school. So I uh, really care about social emotional wellness of kids, trying to understand, you know, what makes them tick? How do you engage them? How do you get them to learn in a district? Uh, kind of like Dr. Benol was saying, you know, some of these kids are coming to school with issues that you could never even imagine. I know, I, I mean, some things I've seen since I've been on the board just, you know, struck me as, uh, you know, made me think that my life was a cakewalk compared to them. So uh, truly uh, looking to uh, develop more programs that give kids uh, life skills through college, career, military readiness, and uh, all sorts of uh, other great programs that we have here in the district. So uh, happy to answer any questions you guys have tonight. And again, thank you so much for showing up. I appreciate it. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Uh, fantastic introductions. Um, so now we'll go back to uh, Stephen with our first question. No, we're gonna we're gonna start there because that's the way my notes are, and we don't want to mess that up. <laughs> I appreciate that. What is your vision for Georgetown ISD, Stephen, and how can you help shape this as a trustee? I have an immediate vision and a long-term vision. My immediate vision is I want to get our DNF rated schools up to being A and B rated schools. I think this is critical uh, for several reasons, uh, largely because there are po potential sanctions from the Texas Education Agency if we don't get this fixed pretty soon. And then I think that those ratings are hurting the reputation of the school district and the sooner we fix that, the better. But my long-term vision is particularly uh, toward elementary age kids that they learn the basic academic skills of reading, writing, and arithmetic, because that's the foundation. And without the foundation, the superstructure will fail. Thank you, Stephen. Jeff, would you like me to uh, repeat the question for you? What is your vision for Georgetown ISD and how can you help shape this as a trustee? So uh, my immediate vision for Georgetown ISD is to emerge from this pandemic as a state leader. Um, currently, as Dr. Benold mentioned, our accountability ratings are not the best and actually one of the lowest in Williamson County. So uh, we really need to uh, pick up the pace and have a sense of urgency on the board to figure out what exactly is causing these scores to be so low. I think my, my expertise in finance can help the board 
basically rebuild the budget for what education looks like post pandemic. Um, a lot of the money that was spent on ways we educated kids before this pandemic is going to be completely different once everybody returns to school. So I believe that uh, as a new voice with new ideas and a strong accounting and finance background, I'm in a perfect position to lead Georgetown ISD out of this pandemic. Thank you. Thank you. Ben? Perfect. All right. So I think uh, vision for the district, I agree with what these gentlemen are saying. I know uh, A through F ratings have been hard on everybody, but uh, truly with my experience in the schools, if you, uh, you know, were involved in the schools, uh, you would see that those accountability ratings are flawed and I definitely uh, having those grades better. Nobody in GISD wants to see A or D's or F's tagged on our schools, but I think uh, explaining to the district and explaining to people where those grades come from and what they actually mean and then talking about the things that we're doing in our district, uh, building airplanes, building uh, trailers. I mean, all these th things that uh, engage kids and get kids to, to learn and to do better uh, are the things that we need to continue working on and continue uh, spending our time and effort on. They're right, engaging kids in that way will make them better students and those scores will naturally come up. Thank you very much. Um, second question, <clears throat> excuse me, goes to you first, Jeff. And it is actually a question that came in prior to um, the forum tonight from an audience member. As a local business owner, we're dependent on the local market and therefore the local school districts to educate and prepare our future employees. Be it technical training or general education, preparedness for the workplace or further education is crucial, crucial for lifelong success. What is GS, uh, GISD doing now to measure the degree of graduate preparedness for the high school to work or high school to college transition in the years after leaving GISD? Thank you. So, uh, as Ben mentioned, the College Career and Military Readiness Program that is currently at GISD is doing a great job to prepare kids who aren't ready to just go to college. College is not for everybody, but it's the district's job to help every student get ready for their next step in life. I think that in terms of the, the business owners in the community, they are there to welcome Georgetown graduates into the community and their workplaces. So as a district board member, it is definitely our responsibility to put those policies in place that prepare these kids for their next step in life and to enter to into our businesses in the community. Uh, Ben, you answer the question next, and I'll just repeat the question part of it. Um, what is GISD doing now to measure the degree of graduate preparedness for the high school to work or high school to college transition in the years after leaving GISD? So about uh, two years ago, we challenged the staff in the district to look at college career military readiness as a, a metric that we say 100% of our students should graduate with one of those pathways. So uh, year, uh, it's probably three or four months ago now, uh, we've uh, released metrics on that and showing the growth that we've made in that. So we've got, you know, empirical evidence on how we're preparing those kids to enter, uh, enter the workforce or go to college. So, I mean, it's, if you guys have not been to state of the district, you need to come check that out. That is a true showcase of what GISD is preparing these kids for. And anybody in the community that owns a business that would come there would actively tell more business to come here and see the product that we're producing in GISD. And finally to you, Stephen. What is GISD doing now to measure the degree of graduate preparedness for the high school to work or high school to college transition in the years after leaving GISD? I'm not sure exactly if anyone is measuring anything as to how well prepared our graduates are. I think a real good suggestion would be to simply survey the graduates after they've graduated and ask them how they've done. And I think that would be as applicable to somebody that's gone into the military, someone that's gone directly into the workplace, or since the question was particularly about academic preparation for college, uh, survey the college students and ask them how well they were prepared to, to do in college. Uh, I think that would be uh, very beneficial. Thank you very much. Uh, ben, the next question comes to you first. Elected trustees are part of what's called the Team 8. 
This refers to the concept of trustees working with the superintendent to implement policy. What makes you uniquely qualified to help the trustees achieve the district's direction from a team perspective? Perfect. So uh, I, I come from a, um, a technical background in business and uh, my day to day job is in consulting with, you know, Fortune 500 companies. So I use uh, analytical decision making tools and analysis and processes to uh, take business leaders and organize their objectives into uh, technical solutions. So using that same kind of concept, a consulting mindset, a strategic mindset, uh, looking at the district helps me ask the hard questions. And again, uh, my personal background, I come from, you know, a single parent family, uh, come from, I was a high school dropout that went back and graduated. So I've got a, a perspective on this that most people don't. So uh, I like to look at it from my life experience lens and I use that uh, to help the board, you know, think about things that they may not have thought about from my own personal experiences. Thank you. We go back to Stephen. What makes you uniquely qualified to help the trustees achieve the district's direction from a team perspective? I guess the main thing is my experience being on boards. I've been on multiple, multiple nonprofit boards, including the Boys and Girls Club, uh, the Caring Place, the Georgetown Brain Study, uh, many boards, and I've served as the president on many of those boards, and so I am very used to working with boards. But I think as a new member of the school board, uh, it's going to be up to me to help integrate myself with the experienced members, and I think that I'm going to have to spend some time carefully listening uh, to their points of view, and I'm going to have to be open uh, to uh, negotiating and coming to compromise so that we can come to solutions. Um, I think this is essential if we're going to have a team. Thank you very much. Jeff, just one more time, the question for you, what makes you uniquely qualified to help the trustees achieve the district's direction from a team perspective? So uh, my entire life, I have always emerged as a natural leader, whether it be in sports or in my professional career. I've never been one to be reluctant to voice my opinions and work together as a team to achieve a shared goal. I believe that the board is a lot similar to a jury. So a jury is a group of peers who are there to work together, not individually, to come up with a solution. So. I really don't believe there's anything that prepares you to serve on a school board. I think it's very unique. And the juries that I've been on, when we go to deliberate, I, of course, voice my opinion. And usually the group buys in. I'm there to explain any calculations I might have. Um, but I believe that, you know, working together to achieve a common goal is how we're going to lead this board. Thank you very much. Um, Stephen, I'm going to go back to you with the next question, and I'm taking a little bit of liberty here. I, I apologize if I offend anyone, but I'm going to combine some questions from the audience here tonight about um, the STAR test. Um, what is your philosophy or vision on STAR as a metric for district success? Do you think it should be continued? And if so, what specific steps would you take to raise those ratings? I think the STAR is not a matter of should it continue. It will continue because it's mandated by the state of Texas. And I think that the STAR test is a very good test for what it tests. It tests the Texas education, educational knowledge skills. Uh, if you know what the state of Texas wants you to know in their learning objectives, then you will do well on the test. If something else is being taught other than the Texas educational skills, well, then you won't do well on the STAR test because the STAR test is geared uh, purely to that. Uh, sometimes the STAR test gives us data that doesn't look very good. Um, frankly, I, as men go, am short. But because I'm short, and maybe I don't really like it, but I don't blame the yardstick. Okay, the question goes to Jeff. Your philosophy or vision on the STAR test as a metric for district success, should it be continued? And if so, what steps would you take to meet a goal of raising the ratings for our school? So uh, nobody likes taking a test, but it, it's 
prevalent through our entire life. You start with the STAR test, you take the SAT to get into college. If you want to be a lawyer, you take a test, a doctor, you take a test. So it's not about trying to get us not to take tests. It's about figuring out what exactly is causing our students to test so low. I think an investment in technology, infrastructure, and just additional curriculum that ties directly to what the state wants kids to be able to do. I think the state curriculum is not the only input, but it's an important one if we are going to be given money based on how well our kids are testing. Ben, what is your philosophy or vision on the STAR test as a metric for district success? Should it continue? And um, what steps would you take to meet a goal of raising the scores? The STAR test, plain and simple, is a test that was designed for statistical analysis. It needs to be not used as a, a punitive tool in our system. Kids fear it. Teachers fear it. I've not talked to a professional teacher that, you know, that's their profession in life that says that the way we're using this is a good idea. I don't disagree with the use of STAR test, but if we use the STAR test as a diagnostic tool to say kids are down here, let's look at why they're down here and not say that the district is failing because they're down here makes a lot more sense. So I think there, you know, we have to take it as Dr. Benold said, it's state mandated, but I think we need to lobby the state in the way that we use the exam. It's not, it's a diagnostic test. It shouldn't be punitive to our district. Thank you very much. <clears throat> I think this will be our final question and it goes to Jeff first. As Georgetown ISD continues to grow, what do you think is the biggest challenge facing the school district? So Georgetown ISD is experiencing exponential growth. I actually live in one of the neighborhoods that is building 500 plus homes in the next year. I believe that as Georgetown grows, so will the ability for our teachers to communicate exactly what the kids need to learn and in relation to the previous tests, help them score better on state mandated tests. As we grow, we're obviously gonna need more money to invest in new schools, new infrastructure. And if our, our budget is based on state testing, we need to make sure that the first dollars we get go into figuring out how we increase those test scores. Thank you. Uh, ben, <clears throat> excuse me, as Georgetown ISD continues to grow, what do you think is the biggest challenge facing the school district? I think it's just, again, we serve currently about 12,000 kids. Each one of those kids is unique to themselves, and trying to find a way to engage every individual kid is always a challenge. So continued focus on, uh, you know, things that help us engage with that kid and make them excel. And again, you know, looking at ways to modify the way we're using STAR tests so that they're you know, teachers and children aren't scared to take a test. It's, you know, uh, more kids means more uh, diversity in, in the classrooms, more diversity in the school system. And that's you know, it's very, very challenging to keep up with when we try to put a standardized test across all of these unique individuals. So I think uh, just dealing with uh, all the uniqueness that uh, comes with the expansion and the growth in, in the county or in the community, or I guess county as well. So we're growing fast. And finally to you, Stephen, as Georgetown ISD continues to grow, what do you think is the biggest challenge facing the school district? Uh, I think uh, biggest might be building all the schools necessary for all those people. But I think the most difficult challenge is not that. I think the most difficult challenge is going to be teaching in first, second, and third grade the basic knowledge skills of reading, writing, and math because if that foundation is not laid, then future education is probably not going to be successful. Excellent. That, okay. Um, <clears throat> we have one minute of closing comments. And since Ben did not get a final question to go first, Ben will go first with you for your final minute closing comments. Perfect. I just, again, I want to thank uh, everybody for coming out tonight. Uh, this is more important than you know. Uh, about less than 4,000 people typically decide this race in May. So I encourage you guys to all get out and vote. Uh, ben Stewart, Place 7, currently incumbent, and I would appreciate uh, continuing my work on the school board. Thank you. I would just like to say that 
I am very passionate about the education, particularly of elementary school te- uh, of children. Uh, I think that our career uh, and um, military and vocational te- school is very important. I have always been supportive of that. But the reality is that doesn't start until high school. And most people will tell you that even for manufacturing work, the minimum today with the technology that we use is an eighth grade level of reading, writing, and math. And if we don't get that foundation done in the early years, and we're not getting it done right now, that's why we have failing elementary schools and middle schools, and I want to help change that. All right. Thank you, everybody, for coming out tonight. Really appreciate it. Having a a young daughter, I'm highly invested in the future success of Georgetown ISD. I believe that I can be a voice for all children in the district, no matter where they come from. And I believe that an urgent professional business person's mind on the school board with new ideas is exactly what this district needs. Thank you again. Thank you very much, gentlemen.